Part of conscious evolution is not just about trying to focus on love, but also making the darkness conscious and learning the lessons therein, within and without. As the Russian mystic Boris Muraviev said, illusion, thinking it is reality, takes reality for illusion. Maybe the We Are All One New Age slogan, as true as it is from a higher perspective, must also be carefully re-examined with a sober and objective eye. Sure, Bush and Gandhi are one, but one of them doesn't seem to have any conscience at all, and not even the remote ability to feel any compassion, love or understanding, fully cut off from the higher centers of consciousness. Is he or others in power really human to begin with, just because he looks like one? What does it mean to be human? We always say that this is just human behavior, but never question it. Have we ever noticed how people project all these qualities into the world leaders without ever considering that they simply may not think or feel like regular folks do, may not even be genetically wired as the average man, but can perfectly imitate and act that way and fool us along the way? This doesn't necessarily mean that Bush or other political figures are alien hybrids, but relates to another greatly misunderstood and ignored topic, psychopathy and political ponderology. From a hyperdimensional perspective, psychopaths may be even used as portals through which negative aliens can work through. Who needs aliens when we've got psychopaths? <laughs> you know, I mean... But, you're, but the psychopaths are being motivated by, by hyperdimensional beings. Yes, and, and also Lizzie's yes, and yes. Greys, right? Who are uh, Grays on are, the fourth... Well, Greys are cybergenetic probes. They're not level. even real beings. They're like, almost like... They're like plant-like, living-like robots. Sure. You know, they're like a cross between a plant and a critter, and, mm -hmm. and they grow them like plants, you know, and they, and they send them because they can function in our reality much more easily than uh, the overlords who have great difficulty making their vibrations uh, match with our reality. And uh, they've also been working on hybridization projects to hybridize beings that can cross densities, that can be by density, that can move between densities, mm -hmm. because they want to use these bodies themselves as incarnational opportunities when they, you know, in, in a sense, uh, uh, to use them as portals into our world. Millions of children are reported missing each year, never to be seen again. Did they just run away, or is there a more sinister truth to it? What may be the goal of this abduction and hybridization program that is going on in complete secrecy? Where is it all leading to? Some suggest as a replacement after cataclysmic changes have wiped off the majority of the population, like a reseeding. This may sound like a bad sci-fi movie or fear-mongering to some people, Yet anyone who has sincerely looked into it knows that the UFO and alien phenomena has a darker side that can't be just ignored. It is interesting to note that if there is something presented which may not look that pretty, it is sometimes automatically judged as fear-mongering or being negative. Some people seem to mistake objectivity for negativity and wishful thinking for positivity. Most of what people see as negative or positive are their subjective projections and opinions that don't really reflect the world as it is. We're just looking at some of the pieces of the puzzle and the possible emerging picture and resulting questions we may have to ask ourselves. It's all just information. What we do with it and how we react to it, be it fear, denial, discomfort, excitement or inspiration, is up to each one of us. Discomfort in examining our fears can serve a purpose, if used or applied correctly. There is a chance for healing from a shamanic and esoteric perspective. It is good to put oneself into a state of vulnerability when looking at the darker aspects of our reality or of oneself. Truly looking at it, facing it and not giving the ego a chance to explain it all away so we can go back to our comfort zone and ultimately go back to sleep. It's not about buying into fear and panic either but about gaining knowledge and understanding. Sometimes things need to be confronted without automatically defending our beliefs and views. 
allowing us to look at the world and ourselves more objectively, not only in regards to the UFO alien issue, but in many other aspects as well. That's part of the awakening process and raising consciousness. One thing is for sure, the UFO and alien phenomena is real. Non-human intelligent entities are and have been visiting Earth, most likely interacting with humanity for thousands of years. The question is now, why are they here? Do they really come from outer space and a different planet? Or are they just hiding outside our perception and have been here all along, or maybe both? There are people who suggest that all we have to do is show love and project love on these beings and that's how we become one and enter the golden age. Is that really the way and understanding of love or is that part of the New Age disinformation program welcoming our space brothers as friends and saviors? Intent is important, yes, we need to be positive and loving, but intent without really seeing what is going on objectively, separating truth from lies, essentially does more harm than any good. Isn't it interesting, as we all focus on global issues such as the environment, self-sustainability, the fake war on terror, economy, the banking system, etc. All important topics that need to be addressed and looked at, but all along there seems to be something else going on which we totally ignore, deny, even laugh about, or try to explain away with questionable spiritual concepts or mainstream psychology. The high strangeness of UFOs, aliens, abductions and hyperdimensional realities may hold major clues for what is happening and has happened on our planet in regards to history, the rise and fall of nations, religions, evolution, culture, wars, conspiracies, human behavior, psychology, basically humanity's existence as a whole, even potentially the very creation of it. Maybe the elite, which seems to control the world these days through government, media, military and transnational corporations, are mere puppets to their hyperdimensional masters who have been manipulating humanity for ages. It seems to be happening before our eyes that they have been creating a ruthless uh, race in which to incarnate themselves at the time of this upcoming macrocosmic quantum event so that they can rule over the rest of humanity, whatever remains, uh, in f f the higher density state. In other words, they want to lock this planet into their evil uh, garden spot for them to have control and domination. They think, you know, of course, for all of eternity. That's their plan. That's their intention. And, uh, you know, we would like to see that that doesn't happen. We'd like to see a, f a future freedom for people and the Caesar said that, that also is possible but the people you know can't do it until they can connect together in a certain way and they cannot connect together in a way that can block that hyperdimensional in, in other words what we want to do is we want to cut off their power supply there are all these pathological people on our planet and they're getting fueled by these hyperdimensional negative beings that are negative you can't even plumb the depths of their negativity. You read about the most horrible crimes that have ever occurred committed by so-called humans on this planet and you're getting a little bit of the picture of what their internal landscape is like. What are the implications for humanity when considering the possibility that hyperdimensional alien entities have manipulated humanity through belief systems and genetics since the beginning of time or since the fall from Eden as some may want to call it? all the while feeding on us energetically, emotionally, as well as physically. There are ancient accounts that hint to the reality of hyperdimensional control and alien life forms. There are cave paintings and scriptures, writing of the Gnostics and Sufi, the Native Americans and various ancient esoteric teachings. This underlying hyperdimensional reality that is behind our history and how it, you know, extrudes itself into the historical timeline and how you can observe these long uh, historical events and see the movement of that hyperdimensional energy through you know, the actions of human beings, through historical cycles, through uh, the behavior of groups of people, through the manipulations, things emerge. You know? This is the age of transformation, but also the age of deception. As the frequency raises on the planet, 
What we might be experiencing sometime in the future is an intersection of densities and the beings inhabiting them. Perhaps the aliens haven't really traveled from a distant planet, but have been here all along. Some researchers suggest that the Anunnaki are returning to Earth. Maybe they never left, but have been here this whole time, just right outside our range of perception. As one abductee said, they may see us as their property and Earth as their farm. We are the resources and food. Or another more disturbing quote by an abductee. You know, to them we are just cockroaches. We might laugh at such statements, but millions of people are going through these experiences which the mainstream labels as psychological issues. Maybe we should give the abductees a closer listen, as well as the researchers in that field.